Hello and good morning, good afternoon, and a very good evening to you, the good people of the tube. Hope you're all today. Hope you're feeling grand and all is well in your world. Uh, welcome to the final, maybe, video of the High Benton guitar kit build. Uh, and I say final, maybe, because there might be some issues when we're putting this thing back together in the fact of the tremolo I want to use might not fit. I might have to refill the holes yet, wait for them to dry, and then redrill the holes to accommodate the Wilkinson tremolo that I want to put in this guitar. But we will find that out in this episode if that's the case, because I don't know at this point in time. I'm a bit, I'm a bit dubious that it's going to fit. I think we're going to have some issues there. Anyway, uh, the headstock is dry. The varnish has dried on the headstock with my little character man. And the body is finished. So here we go, everybody. There's the back and there's the front. And I didn't paint the cavities just because I kind of started painting them. And I was like, I just kind of like, again, random uniqueness. The cavities are kind of semi-painted. So um, it wasn't laziness, I promise you. I actually just wanted to leave it that way. I kind of wish I hadn't started painting the cavities. I wish I'd left them without any paint. But, you know, the beauty of hindsight. But yeah, this is the colour everybody and I absolutely love it. So I can't wait to get this guitar together today. Like I say, I don't know at this point in time if the tremolo, the tremolo is the only thing that bothers me. The tremolo is the only thing that bothers me at this point in time. So um, I don't know how, how that's gonna work out. So, um, so let's get to it. Oh, I managed to find some Cluson style machine heads with, uh, oversized washers as well so I'll be fitting these I won't be fitting the old um, machine heads it came with I'm gonna be putting uh, these Cluson style ones on because I I love this style those ones Wait, there we go those ones there they're, they're just unbranded these ones but they're um, they're really really good I, I don't even know where these came from but they're really really good so um, I'm just, yeah I'm I'm, I'm, I'm sure we've all got boxes of boxes of stuff that we're like, where did that even come from? We've had it for ages, we just don't remember. So uh, so I'm going to be fitting um, these clues on machine heads today, and, I, and that's going to be the first job. And then basically, once the new machine heads are in, uh, I want to get a better string tree as well, as the old string tree is a bit... I don't really like it. It's it's really wide. I don't know if you'll be, be able to see this. It's, it's massive. Uh, my uh, It's really, really small, sorry. Uh, but it's massive. It's like really spaced out and wide and I don't really like that and it doesn't It doesn't feel like it holds the strings properly If you know what I mean like when I was putting the strings underneath when I first strung this guitar up in episode one It didn't feel right. It, it you know, it didn't feel right. So I've got plenty of string trees. I'm gonna be swapping out uh, uh, for that so um, So yeah, but without further ado Let's get the machine heads on the headstock get the new string tree on and uh, yeah, so let's start here. Like I say, I have left the back of the neck unfinished or as, as it came, you know, it's basically the sanding sealer because it just feels nicer. I didn't want to varnish it because it can get sticky. Um, but yeah, we're all good. So uh, yeah, without further ado, machine head time. Let's go. Can't wait to see this guitar together. I really cannot. Oh, and also another thing quickly, just a note. Um, I've changed the original scratch plate to a mint green scratch plate. I didn't film that because it's, you know, to change things, scratch plates out is very, very simple. I didn't film that. I think I've got a video on it somewhere. I, if I haven't, you know, it's not, it's not, it's not hard to do. Uh, so we now have, I don't know how, I don't think the camera will be able to pick that up, but it's now a mint green scratch plate, people, on tube. So, um, so yeah, so that's the electrics. Because I, I don't like stark white scratch plates unless they're, unless they're the single ply 50 style ones. Anyway, enough talking. Headstock time. Machine head time. Aha. Okie dokie, people of the tube. We are putting in the oversized washers so we can uh, install these Clusons. And they're just going in like absolutely perfect. I don't even have to get a hammer. Sometimes you have to kind of knock these in a bit with a hammer just because they won't quite, you know, the whole size is very, they've just gone in perfectly. I didn't even have to, um, I didn't even have to force them in. So there we go. So we've got the oversized washers now, when I put the machine heads in the other side, uh, it'll come through, it'll, it'll be fine. So uh, yeah, next job, we need to get all these machine heads in the back, lined up and 
ready to go. I also need to find some screws that are going to uh, be good enough. I might have to raid the uh, the screw supply. Oh, what's going on here? Oh, there we go. Me being stupid, as usual. Come on, you know you want to. There we go. Good gravy, I love the look of these machine heads. I really do. There's just something about these, this style. I don't know. Okay, I need to get them lined up now. Okay, this is going to be difficult. I uh, can't really use that. I need something to prop the neck up on so it's uh, a bit higher up. Ah. Mr. Magnetic Block, that'll work. Ah, there we go, perfect. Thank you! Okay, so when mounting machine heads like this, it's always important to get a ruler underneath them. So they all line up where they should. So, uh, so when you take it away, well, once you've drilled the pilot holes for machine heads, when you take that away, they're going to be perfectly in line. So uh, always get them lined up on a ruler. So that is now. Oh, that's not quite right. There we go. So that's perfect. So I need two. Draw some holes. Uh, and I go, basically I start off with like the smallest human, the, the, the smallest drill bit I can find humanly, just to, um, just to, you know, to start a hole. I don't want anything humongous and big. So this isn't the most, let's make sure they're all flat in and not quite. That's better. Okay, come down. Okay, and again, it's it's check, check, and check again. Never just assume that you've got it right on the first go, because the moment you assume you've got it right, something's going to go really wrong. So just make sure everything's right before you do any like you know drilling of the holes or anything like that. You don't really want to be just kind of jumping and going. Oh, I can do this. You know, it's it's not a good idea. You're going to end up with you know some severe problems. So, so yeah. So here we go. So yeah, I'll be back in a minute, everybody. Again, what all, all I'm going to do now is just going to drill these holes. But I kind of want to do it. Oh, I don't really want to do it on this. I'm going to find something a little bit better to rest the guitar on, and uh, I'll be back in a second once I've got the holes drilled, and we'll get some screws in there to get these uh, mounted correct. So, um, yeah, back in a second. Okie dokie people with you, we have done the pilot hole, so what I'm going to do now is just going to remove the machine heads and uh, basically just widen the hole up ready to accept the screw. Oh, where's my paintbrush? Uh, again, rulers, paintbrushes, paintbrushes are brilliant just to clean stuff off, amazing things. So basically all I'm going to do now is I'm going to go up to the next drill bit, size wise, and just keep widening the hole until it's... Um, well, pretty sure it's the next one up. It's like three. Uh, oh, it might not be actually. It might be this one. Yeah. So um, we've got pilot holes, as you can see. Uh, hopefully. So we, uh, uh, you know, and I'm not. I'm not bothered. I'm not going to fill the old holes. I like it. You know, adds character. So uh, now it's going to widen this up. And I'm not going gung ho. Just. Zerp. And always be careful you don't go through a whole headstock. Because <laughs> I've done that before. And I'll say I'm no I'm not brilliant at this kind of thing. But I enjoy it nonetheless. It's great fun. So, uh, machine head screws now. Uh, got quite a few here. I'm gonna have to dive into my uh, bag of screws to get some more out though, because I haven't got enough. So, so yeah. So now we've got the pilot holes drilled. They should be deep enough. I'm, I'm, I ain't bothered to uh, kind of measure the depth, but yeah, that, that should be fine. 
he says. He says. Let's just check. So, get that in there. Get my little screwdriver. Perfect. Yeah, we're all good. Okay, so, uh, yeah, and it's just rinse and repeat this, really. So, what I'll do is I'll get all the machine heads uh, screwed down, screwed in, and then I'll be back, and then we'll fit the string tree, which I'll find while I'm looking for more screws. And uh, and then once this is all happy and done, we'll, um, we'll move on to the body. <clears throat> and then we can, uh, well, fingers crossed, we can get the tremolo to line up and fit. I don't know though, I don't know. Like I say, that's really on my mind. The tremolo is really on my mind, it's really bothering me. So uh, yeah, I don't know at this point in time. Anyway, I'll be back in a minute once all these are screwed down and screwed in and we'll get the, uh, the other, um, the, get, the, get a better string tree installed as well. So yeah, uh, back in a moment. Meow. Okay, people of the tube, we have machine heads on, in a line looking happy and dandy. So the last thing to do is to get the string tree on this machine, uh, on this headstock, on oh, the machine head indeed, David. So I've, uh, I drilled out the hole because obviously they got a varnish, the varnish got in it, but uh, I was uh, able to find a bit of a better uh, string tree. It's a bit more of an industrial strength one, it's huge. But, uh, but yeah, it should hold the strings down a little bit better than the one. And I'm not gonna screw it in tight. I want it to move. But there we go, people of the tube. The gravy caster, I think. Should we call it the gravy caster? I don't know. But yeah, there we go. One complete headstock. I can hear a plane in the sky. That's the first time I've heard a plane in the sky in about two weeks. Weird. Um, okay, so where are we now? Body. Okay, so... We need to find out about the tremolo. We need to find out about the tremolo really before we do anything. So, this is the Wilkinson tremolo. And it's a vintage, you know, folded steel saddle one. Hopefully you can kind of see that. Um, and I'll, I need, well I need to get the, the neck mounted actually because I need to know. Because the holes don't line up. But I am going to quickly. Uh, a hole that does line up. I want to get this screwed in. I want to see the string alignment more than anything. So I'm just going to screw this one screw in. Then what we'll do is we'll get the neck bolted on. Because it's really annoying because... The only screw hole that doesn't line up is the high E screw there. And also I have a fear now that because of where this tremolo sits, the scratch plate not, might need a bit of a kind of reshaping around the tremolo. But that's not, that's not really the issue. The issue is, is this tremolo gonna work? Is it gonna, you know, are the strings gonna line up properly? You know, I don't know, I really don't. I'm gonna put the, um, the G-string screw in as well, just to give it a bit more stability than just that is. Just, it should hold it a bit, you know, a bit, a bit straighter. I literally don't know how long I've had this tremolo unit for. It's a long time. I've had this Wilkinson tremolo for a long time, but I don't remember. I think I just bought it for spares, you know what I mean? Just in case. Um, and these Wilkinson tremolos, I absolutely adored them. I had, I had them both on my vintage V6s, so. You know, I, 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 I knew I knew I knew they were good, so uh, it was worth getting it. It was definitely worth getting it because here, here we are today. Well, he says we don't know yet. So let's get the um, let's get the neck screwed on, and uh, yeah, this is going to be the first kind of glimpses, if you will, of what this guitar is going to uh, look like finished. It's going to be very interesting, very very interesting. Like I say, at this point in time, this episode we might not get to play it. There might be another episode yet. I don't know. We'll have to uh we'll have to see him in, in butter butter movement. But um it's certainly 
I don't know. I just don't know at this point in time. We'll have to, we'll have to see. Okay, so. I'm not going to screw the neck on super, super tight like it's the final fit because, in all fairness, I think the neck will probably have to come off again. So I don't want to be getting it nice and tight and in place just yet. You know, it, it, I, I just need an idea of where the neck sits. So when I take the strings up to the headstock, I need to see if the, the two E's line up. Because if they don't, then obviously this tremolo isn't, isn't going to work and I'm going to have to... Um, well, I don't know. We'll have, to, we'll have to see, we'll have to see. Okay, so that's gone, okay. So now, now I've got to tighten up a bit more. It's not not quite, not quite there. That'll just limp, you know, just limp wrist it into place. Oh, that'll do. There you go, that's not going to go in. That looks wicked. I, that colour, the, 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 the really dark wood, uh, amaranth is the wood. Uh, I don't know how that's how you say it. Amaranth or amaranth or however you do say it. But that's what this fretboard wood is. It's really dark. It's black, actually. You know, the fretboard wood is really black. And it looks really cool in contrast to this colour. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to see. It's gorgeous. Okay, so. Um, this is going to be fun. I don't even... It's got Diodario strings in it, so I've definitely used it at some point. I've, I've, I have no idea what guitar this was on <laughs> at all. Okay, this is going to be like trying to unravel the mysteries of the universe. So I'm going to unravel these strings. <laughs> Might take me a couple of years, and uh, then I'll be back, uh, and we're going to test out the string alignment because I'm not sure if this is going to work. We might have to... If I have to use the original tremolo, what I'm going to do is simply hardtail it. It's as simple as that. If, if it, and, until I, you know, or just hardtail it full stop. Uh, just, you know, get a bit of wood, shove it in the back. I don't know, but we'll see, we'll see. Okay, so I'll be back in a minute, everybody, just when I've got this mess unraveled. I don't know how long these have been like this for years. So, uh, yeah, I'll be back in a sec. Okie dokie, so, tremolo... With string alignment. The string alignment is no different to the original tremolo. Um, if you remember in episode one, uh, the low E string kind of sat really quite far into the neck and the high E string was kind of kind of on the outside. Um, and that's exactly what's happened here with the Wilkinson bridge. So the string alignment's exactly the same as the original bridge was. Uh, and the reason for the a skew string alignment is the neck pocket is not cut straight. It's um, the, the neck pocket actually goes at an angle. So it technically should be straight, but this one actually goes off uh, down towards kind of the bottom of the guitar. So the neck kind of dips that way. Um, due to the neck pocket more, you know, just, just because of the way the neck pocket was cut, it's actually askew. So it's actually kind of slanted off to the, let's say, to, to, it's, it's going towards the floor. It makes the, it makes the neck aim towards the floor. It's not aiming up, it's not in the middle, it's aiming down. So um, what we're going to do is we're going to stick to this as is. Uh, with this tremolo unit, I might need to shim up the neck though. Maybe, I don't know. But again, that's not that's not an issue. That's not a big problem at all. Uh, the only issue I do worry about, trying to get that string in place, is like I say, the problem is the strings just aren't straight. They're askew because of, uh, and again, it's nothing I can do about it. It's 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 the neck pocket. Uh, the neck pocket kind of isn't cut straight. Like I say, it's off, so there's nothing I can do about it. So, we're gonna leave it, and I'm gonna uh, drill another hole for the high E because there's enough wood, luckily, on the, uh, the holes, the hole on the E, and I'll probably do one for the B as well. They mismatch so much that there's you can't even see the original hole. So the, the holes that were there on the original tremolo, you can't even see them. So I'm going to be able to drill new holes. If that becomes an issue with the old holes, 
then 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 we'll have to fill them. But I want to try first, and and go from there. But the the string alignment is kind of no different to how it is with the original, so that's okay. You know, I'm not going to lose sleep over that. Like I said, there's nothing I can do about it anyway because of a neck pocket, the way it was cut. Um, but yeah, I am, I am, uh, I am pondering it. I mean, it, technically, what I maybe should do, although I don't know if it's worth it at this point in time, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe the best thing to do would be to fill all the holes and, and remount the tremolo, but I want to see how it plays first as is. Because if I get this all reassembled and strung up and it plays fine, then I'm not going to lose sleep over it, the string alignment being askew. Like I said, there's nothing I can do about that anyway. Um, so I'm not going to lose sleep over that. But if I get this all strung up and the, the string alignment's all over the place and I can't play it because it's just awkward to play, then then what we'll do is we'll we'll take the tremolo off, we'll, we'll, we'll fill the holes properly and then we'll re-drill the holes and remount the tremolo so it's a bit more this way. But that could throw up all sorts of issues as well because of the neck angle. Leave it how it is for now. I'll drill these two new holes. We'll get the tremolo mounted. We'll get everything done. And we'll take it from there, people of the tube, because, like I say, the string alignment that there is right now is no different to the original tremolo. And I could play that fine. It didn't feel bad at all. So, um, so yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the neck back off get these holes drilled, get the tremolo fixed in place, get the earth wire soldered as well while I'm at it. And, uh, and yeah, we'll go from, well, actually I won't get the earth, no, I won't get the earth wire soldered just yet. We'll do that in a bit. But yeah, um, I'm umming and ahhing. I'm very umming and ahhing about this, people of the tube. I'm very, um, I don't know. I really don't know. I mean, it's not horrific. The high E is not horrific. It's not hanging off the edge of the fretboard. There's a good... What, I'd say about a millimetre. Wrong, wrong end. That's inches. Yeah, I mean, it, it, there's a good distance between the high E string when it comes down and it'll be in tune to the bottom of the fret line. It's not going to be like you'll play it and it'll constantly fly off the edge of the board. It'll be okay. And like I say, I'm pretty sure that's to do with the, the neck pocket. It's nothing, again... I noticed it when I was painting it. I was like, the, the neck pocket doesn't look right, and it, and it isn't right. It's um, it's askew. But again, you know, is what it is. If it's playable, that won't make any difference. It won't matter. So, um, yeah. So I'm gonna get these strings off. Like I said, there's no tension on them. I just needed to check them for alignment more than anything. Uh, get these off, and then we'll get take the neck back off get the new holes drilled because there should be plenty of material each side for that. And yeah, and then keep, just keep going basically. I do love these tremolos though. They are absolutely amazing. So uh, yeah, I'll be back in a sec everybody when I've uh, had a bit of a think and I'm gonna really look at this and I'm really gonna think about this and really have a bit of a ponder. So yeah, back in a sec. Okie dokie, people of the tube, we have the tremolo mounted. There was enough wood on the B and the E. The B definitely needed doing as well. Couldn't quite get the screw in. So there was enough wood each side of the, the original holes to actually get the tremolo in. So that's now in. That's ex extremely locked down at this point in time. So we're going to have to do something about that when it gets done. But um, yeah, pop map, we're there. So scratch plate time. Get all the dust out. Okay, so now next issue I think I'm going to face is um, this section of the tr uh, this section of the scratch plate isn't going to quite fit around the tremolo. I just have a feeling. Could be wrong. I hope I am, but uh, I don't know. I need to get the earth wire through there as well. 
a little bit of a mess here. Uh, there we go. Oh. Okay, so I'm going to thread the earth wire through. And the jack socket. Mm. I've got to say, I do love this this clip stuff. It's wicked. Yeah, let's put that for a bit more. Put that down there. So, oh, I need to get the neck off that because it's an overhang. I forgot all about that. What can I get underneath now? Can I? Okay, so I need to take the neck off. Oh my god, this is going to look so cool. This is going to look so cool. Okay, um. I don't think we're going to have any issues with that at all. I think uh, that'll be okay, but I need to take neck off because I can't get the, because uh, we've got an overhang fret. And this is one of the reasons I don't like these. At last fret is you constantly have to, you know, if you, if you want to take the scratch blade off, you have to take the neck off and that drives me a bit balmy. Um, I, 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 I toyed with the idea of cutting off this last fret because I never use it. Well, I do use it if it's there, should I say, but I don't don't like it there for certain reasons, that being one of them. So I'm gonna have to take the neck off now, and um, and then we can mount the scratch plate. God damn it. <laughs> but I've gotta say, this guitar is looking rather snazzy right now. Like I said, I still think with this tremolo unit I've got the Wuggs and Trem, I think I'm gonna have to shim the neck. I don't. I think I'm going to get away with not, uh, with this tremolo. But I could be totally wrong in that assumption. We just don't know at this point in time. So, um, yeah, time will tell on that one. We will find out in this episode, though, which is uh, cool. Okay, so now that's off. Let's try again. Get rid of the, get rid of the dust, man. <laughs> Okay, so I need to thread Mr. Earthwire through again. Oh, hang on a minute. There we go. Uh, did the bee. This is going to be a bit of a peg though now because it's not propped up. Uh, hang on a minute. Okay, there we go. Come on, you know you want to. Okay, that's interesting. There's something blocking my earth wire. I don't really know why. Oh, the tedium, the tedium of... You know what? Where does that come through? There it is, okay. I'm gonna widen this, um, this, uh, this hole because, uh, It's rather, well, it's small and it's causing issues. So I'm gonna widen the earth wire hole because it's getting on my nerves being this small. So let's just make it bigger. <sighs> I'll be careful, I don't hit my uh, springs on the other side. <laughs> Start drilling into one of the springs, that'd be good fun. So how did uh, the guitar fail? Well, I drilled, I drilled into one of the tremolo springs and it, it fell off and smacked me in the face. That's better. That's so much better. Hey, joy to the world. Okay, so come here, you. And that through there. Okay. Okie dokie. Cling, cling, cling. Okay, we've got a few wires in the way, but that is smart. Okay, I'm not giving this guitar away anymore. I'm keeping it forever and nobody's allowed to have it but me. I'm joking, of course. It's gonna be, I'm still gonna give it away, maybe. <laughs> I'm, I, I, you know, it, it, oh, good gravy. It looks really, really smart. It does look really, really cool. Okay, what are we, what are we getting caught? Oh, I see you. There you go, down you go. There we go, yay, joy to the world. Okay, so. Do any of these original holes line up? They do, that does, that does. Get it in right place. Yes, we're all good, we're all good. Where's my screwdriver? 
Okay, so I'm just going to um, actually just wrong screwdriver. Right Too small, David. Okay, so I'm just going to just randomly. I'm just going to put it in place. I'm not going to bother uh, going crazy getting it all screwed in at this point in time. I'm really tempted to cut off that last fret of the fretboard, just because, like I say, I mean, if you want to. If you want to get the scratch plate off, you have to take the neck off, and that, that's a bit of a pig. Scratch plate fits perfectly around that tremolo, though, so that's all good. And this is going to look really smart. Jack socket. Got to say, the clipping together of this, th these things is, is so cool. I love the fact it just clips together. Uh, Easy peasy, and in you go. We're starting to get a guitar, everybody. It's looking pretty cool. I'm looking forward to playing this thing. I say we're not there yet though. So, scratch plate down. Clicked in. Earth wire should be coming out the back. Yep, there she is. Let's get that soldered on. We'll do that in a minute. That's that's flush. Okay, that's clicked in. So yeah, actually, yeah. Let's let's uh let's do all the scratch plate screws now, actually, because there's no point. There's no point waiting because, like I say, I just need to know. Oh, why is that one not? Oh, it, oh yeah, of course, because that's one of my weird ones, isn't it? Okay, I'm not gonna bore you with just watching me screw uh, screws into a scratch plate, everybody. So um, I'll be back in a moment. Okay, people of the tube, we have a together guitar. So now what we've got to do is we've got to string this beast up and uh, see what the string height is like. So. This is going to be. This is going to. Well, this is kind of like the um, the tester for the tremolo, and also the tester to see if I need to shim the neck because I'm not. I don't know. I've just got a feeling I'm going to have to shim up that neck. Give me an E some more. Close enough. Okay. So again, I've got to unravel the mysteries of the universe in these strings. So. Um, is it gonna play ball nice and easy, this one? Is the A string gonna be a happy? Or am I got the B string? I don't even know what string I've got! Okay. <laughs> Come on, why me? I have no I mean these these strings are years old as well, so uh I'm quite curious to how long they're gonna last. Especially with lockdown as well, I can't dive into my strings um, supply because uh, if I did, then I wouldn't have any. <laughs> so um, it's not like I don't have enough guitars, like, but you know. So actually, I should be able to tell from low E. Actually, let me just get this A string on. Them. Nope, we'll be good. We don't need to shim it. That's absolutely fine. Rock and roll biscuits. Okay, so uh, I'm just going to keep stringing this guitar up, everybody. Uh, I've got the neck on. I need to solder the earth wire. But other than that, we are in the final stages. I can't believe we're in the final stages. That's insane. That's absolutely insane. I cannot wait to plug this thing in. I need to get strap buttons on as well, but that's, that's okay. That's a later thing. So yeah, so I'll be back in a second, everybody, with strings on this thing. Okay, people of the tube, we have a guitar. There we go. Earth wire soldered, finish on, done. Tremolo on, working, intonated. Check out the intonation pattern on this one. I told you some are weird. They don't always do the step up. That's intonated, this guitar's intonated. It's very, very, very odd pattern. But, um, but yeah, I nearly, nearly ran out of adjustment on the high E 
because if you can see uh, the saddle's bumping, well, nearly, 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 it's like a fraction of a millimetre, nearly bumping into the screw that holds the tremolo down. So I nearly ran out of adjustment, but literally on the last, like I say, quarter of a millimetre, if that, it got intonated. So we are fully intonated. Uh, pickups are done, the earth wire soldered. Um, actually, weirdly enough, the string spacing on this, on the neck, is actually better than the original bridge. Uh, if I get right over the top, there we go. Uh, you can see the low E does um, hang quite far in, and the high E kind of hangs a little bit further over than I would like, but it doesn't seem to hinder it. And that, again, that's where it was with the other bridge, so it, it, it doesn't really make any difference or matter, to be honest with you, because um, with the other bridge, it played okay. It played fine. There was nothing wrong with that. Um... I don't know if I need to do any work to the nut yet. I don't think I do. There's the headstock. I love the headstock. I don't know. It's just something about... It's just like this most obnoxiously odd-looking headstock. It kind of almost looks like an Ibanez Roadster in a way, but no, kind of not. It's still got the paddle look, which I kind of wanted to keep and just round that top end off. Uh, I'm so glad I've got some um, clues on style machine heads on it. I love my little character thing. Better string tree that holds the strings better. Um, yeah, uh, there we go. Let me show you the back quick. I'll tell you what, it's not light, it's quite a, it's quite a weighty beast. So, there's the tram, uh, got the parallel springs, got the earth wire soldered on. Um, back plate, which is, uh, I don't know, if, I don't know if you'll be able to see this. I've engraved it. It says Dave Simpson was here, and it's uh, dated 3rd of the 4th. Uh, 2020, which again is the date I got this kit. So, uh, and then back of the neck, totally un unfinished. And then you get to the headstock, you can see the yellow tint. Um, and there's my initials there, and there's the Cluson style machine heads. That's probably the neatest I've ever got those style machine heads on. So I'm really, really happy. So, what say you to go in and plug this beast in? I reckon we should do that. Oh, and by the way, too, I don't, I don't think the camera's picking it up, sadly, but it is a mint green scratch plate, and it's a real... When you see it in person, there's a really awesome contrast between the scratch plate and the white pickup covers and the white uh, uh, covers there and, 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 the, and the little football. There's a real kind of cool contrast. And also, the um, the end of the tremolo arm on this Wilkerson Trem is kind of like an off... It's like a yellowy colour, so it, it looks really cool. So yeah, happy days, everybody. Um, the only things I'm probably going to change now are the electrics. So at some point when I can, I'm going to get uh, a wiring loom for those and also uh, different pickups. I mean, in all fairness, it's fine the way it is. But because, like I say, I'm giving this guitar away, I kind of want it kind of fairly specced up, if you know what I mean. I mean, uh, like I say... If I was keeping this, I would never alter anything on it until it died. I would leave the pickups, I would leave the volume and the tone pots, I would leave the select switch. I would just leave it the way it is now. But because, like I say, this is a giveaway guitar at some point, someone's going to get this guitar, um, I do want there to be different pickups and different pots and a select switch in there. Uh, don't worry, I will put a five-way in the uh, in the selector switch just because I know people like their five-ways. Um so I, there will be a five-way uh, switch in there. I won't go for a three-way, which is what I normally would prefer in a guitar. And like I say, if I was going to keep this and I had to update uh, the electronics in it just for better ones, I would shove a three-way switch in. But it doesn't make, doesn't doesn't mean anything. Uh, it doesn't matter about that because, like I say, giving it away, so it's going to have a five-way. Um, so, yeah, there we go, everybody. Um, I love it. I, I am so happy with the way this thing's come out. It just looks... Glorious. It kind of coming um, on the camera for some reason. It looks a bit more Dakota red, candy apple red, and it's not. It's a lot more, I don't know, brownie red. Hopefully, uh, when we go and play on it now, uh, under the diffuser light, you'll be able to see the actual colour it properly. And uh, yeah, so it's together. It's in tune. Um, it's got gauge 10 Diodarios on it. Um, and I don't know how old these strings are, but. I'm sure I'll have to replace them at some point, but at this point in time, I'm glad I've got those because 
I've only got two packs of strings to last me ha however long this lockdown lasts, so I've got to be careful. Um, I've already broke the high E on my vintage lemon drop, and I can't afford to restring it, so there we go. <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, people for two, let's go and plug this thing in, and yeah, let's just let's just listen to it again because. Oh, it looks so cool. It looks so cool. I need to find a strap. I need to find a strap. Okay, so see you in a sec.
Okie okay, dokie people of the tube, this is one fantastic guitar. <clears throat> oh my good lord. I, I don't have any words, sorry, I I'm, I'm a bit spaced out. Um, yeah, absolutely incredible. What a guitar. It feels amazing. Um, my initial thought was, oh the action might be a bit too high on it, but after playing it now, I don't think that's right. It's, it's just about right where you can grab the string. It's just about right. Unreal. Absolutely unreal. And like I say, at this point in time, we've got stock electrics. So we've got the stock pickups, the stock... Uh, uh, not, I didn't use the tone pot. Stock volume and selector switch. Oh, amazing. What a guitar. What a guitar. So yeah, here you go, everybody. Uh... I don't, know, I don't know how well, but hopefully the light's picking up the red okay, because it's, it's it's a gorgeous, gorgeous colour. It's like a really, it's a blood, it's blood red. It's absolutely blood red, and it's just gorgeous. Love it a bit. I say the strings need stretching still. They're not fully holding tune, but it's good enough. You know what I mean? It's not, it's not like it, it fell horrifically out of tune. It was just like, oh my god, that's unplayable. Uh, but it could do with a little bit of a. Uh, Settling, but again, I don't know how old these strings are. Uh, they're definitely at least two, three, if not longer years old. These strings, so you know, for them to even stay in tune at all is quite impressive. So, anyway, people of the tube, there you go. Um, yeah, uh, absolutely blown away, absolutely blown away. Can't recommend these kits enough now. These high bent and guitar kits are great fun. They're really cheap as well. And I say, it's it's a very unique little guitar now, I feel. You know, in, in the way, you know, the headstock, the colour. The fact that I hand-painted it as well, so you get all these... Uh, let me get kind of... You hopefully see the mint green scratch plate there, but if I get it in the light, you can hopefully see all the imperfections in the, in the paintwork. Where it's not smooth, it's not perfect. And I like that, because again, it gives it its own character. So yeah, there we go. And I say, the Wilkson Tram on there as well you know that's that's working that's doing its job it's really nice <sighs> what a guitar what a guitar absolutely in love so yeah you'll be seeing more of this guitar definitely more of this guitar um yeah what a beast again massive thanks to nick for this you know for this kit it, uh, the gift of this kit it, it's it's been awesome i've really enjoyed every second of putting this thing together and finishing it and you know modding it so far uh the string spacing on the high e is not an issue either um because i was a bit worried about that but again that's not a problem at all this thing just needs to settle now it just needs to be played in for a few weeks and just settle itself and uh become its become itself really now because uh it's it's obviously you know it's it's learning to have tension on the neck. Uh, I've, I've obviously done the truss rod. Uh, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's learning. It's got to learn kind of like, you know, what it is now instead of uh, what it was, which is just like this thing in a box. So yeah, there we go, people. Do hope you enjoyed this little mini series of three episodes. I was kind of worried it was going to be four just because of the trend. But uh, technically, this isn't the last episode though because I've got to do the electrics. So, technically, this isn't the last episode. So, forget that. Forget what I just said. There will be an episode four at some point when I change all the electrics out and put different pickups in it. Although, I don't see why I should bother because it sounds amazing. But, because, like I say, because I'm giving it away, we're going to do that. And we're going to do these as well. Just because I want uh, longevity out of it. You know what I mean? I don't... These pots won't last forever. And neither will this like to switch. These pickups probably will. But these pots definitely won't. But, yeah. There we go, people of the tube. I'm a bit out of words, so uh, I'm going to keep playing this, and uh, I'll see you later, alligator. Um, yeah, have a great morning, afternoon, good evening, everybody. Uh, see you soon. Have a good one. Goodbye now.